Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make Guys. Marco here and today we paint with oils. Uh, not this one, this one. I'm sure that at this point of the channel's life you have at home more than few tubes of oil paint and after this video up here you've already made some experiments with your new tools, so it's finally time to paint something with oils from start to finish. In this video I paint with a limited time frame of 2 hours focusing on quick and easy techniques that will give you a solid foundation and a set of versatile basic tools to immediately tackle a full project with oil paints, even if you are a total beginner. Today's model is from Kingdom Death and one of its uh, Echoes of Death expansions. I started painting with in mind the concept of a Roman legionnaire, but after a few brush strokes the inspiration went in a totally different direction and this became a tribute to Wonder Woman, still trying to stay faithful to the general mood and the visual style of the game. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel and if you want to support the channel check also my Patreon page. Before starting I have to solve an issue with my palette. You don't need anything complicated as your oil palette, just a flat, easy to clean, non porous surface and mine is simply the glass from an old broken frame. I put an A4 sheet under the glass and I have a perfect neutral background for my mixes and a large working area that I can easily clean over and over. But recording videos I constantly move the palette to adjust the shots and this palette is not really movement friendly, plus I eat my nails, so I always have an hard time trying to lift the thin glass. Time for a life hack! I clean well one side with alcohol based wipes until it's perfectly squeaky clean. I move outside for a couple of solid coats of white spray paint and I add a double set of rubber and felt feet, leftovers of my IKEA's desk. This is so incredibly satisfying. Time to move to the serious stuff. I've already primed the model in black and white with an extremely simple high contrast. You saw me do this dozens of times and from now on I'll show you this step only if there's something new or really meaningful in the value sketch. Plus after the last video you can produce the same effect in no time and without any effort with a spray can, so you have no more excuses to skip the black and white sketch. In general you can start from any kind of base. This step follows the same rules of acrylic painting and this is simply how I always start my models. Just prepare your base or underpainting based on the general set of values you are going to paint. Here is the first trick that will make your life much easier. If I have to paint a very saturated or solid opaque color I first paint it using an acrylic base, in this case I use contrast paints for a quick coverage. Oils can be extremely opaque, but usually on miniatures you want to keep the thickness of the oils layer as thin as you can to speed up the drying time and make everything smoother. Having a base tone already in place means that oils will have to take care only of lights, shadows and tonal variations, limiting the quantity of paint on the model. As you can see I left skin, fur, leather and what will be steel armor in white, because in these areas white is a good starting point for the tones I want to paint. Again you can totally start from a white canvas or from a complete sketch in acrylics. The underpainting will affect all the next layers in different ways, so I invite you to do some experiments to see what you like the most, and using both approaches on the same model is a great way to see them working at the same time next to each other. I want to start with the most basic setup and tools. Palette, cups, brushes, simple hardware store, odorless white spirit and up tailung oil paints. Again check my overview of tools and materials for all the details about this stuff. I set my pools of paint in the upper part of the palette, so I have a lot of space for mixing and I can keep the original pools pure and clean. I'm still testing this line, so I prepare more colors than I actually need, just to have an excuse to try new tones. Painting with oils you don't need a lot of colors both on your palette and in your collection, because mixing is the backbone of the process. You'll see better what I mean during this paint job and seeing my palette at the end. As you can expect from a medium with centuries of history, there are several different ways, methods, techniques and personal preferences when it comes to the actual painting, and in this case several ways to start the work. I want to show you an approach that, uh, even if a bit scary, it's extremely beginner friendly. I add just a bit of white spirit to the paint, mixing a thick, dense wash. 
and I apply it directly on the model in a quick and loose way. I do the same for every basic color I have on the model. This is not weathering, so I like to keep the identity of every part using a different tone in every area. I have a warm brown for the skin, paints grey on the armor and the blue parts, and a deep dark violet for the red tones. I know, now everything seems a mess, but check this out. I clean the model with makeup sponges and q-tips, as I usually do for weathering. I don't use a single drop of white spirit for this, the tools have to be completely dry. As you can see this slightly changes the basic tones, creating also a bit of definition because some paint gets trapped into the details, but this is not the point. The objective is to create an oily base for an easy and smooth blending in the next stage. The dry cleaning of the model can't remove everything, and what remains on the figure is the thinnest layer of oil you can possibly create. This way, when I apply the next color, I'm already working wet on wet, to use the acrylic terminology. This setup makes everything a bit easier for beginners, because all the colors will blend and flow easily, without friction and resistance against the acrylic base. Plus, you are probably already used to paint wet on wet, and this is exactly the same, but without the pressure of time and the stress of the quick drying paint. This took me half an hour, and with just 3 simple and stress free steps, I already have on the model some depth and interesting tones that will lead the way for the next steps. <laughs> this will probably make the views drop, but if I have to be honest, from now on you'll see the same process over and over and over again. Apply the paint with one brush. and blend the paint with another clean brush. Over and over and over again. You can stop watching! Go home, there's nothing more to see here! No no no, I was kidding, there's more, I promise. This is the beauty of oil paints on miniatures. They are dead simple to use. I really think that the hardest part is to break the wall of stocking the materials and overcome the fear of the new medium. Even non-metallic metal effects become easy and intuitive. I set lights, shadows and reflections with a simple sketch. The structure of the metallic illusion is all there, I need only to soften the transition with just few taps of the clean brush. I apply the tone where I want its maximum intensity, and I blend it, fading its edges in the direction I need. I use more and thicker paint to fix an intense hue, and less, more diluted paint for softer and more delicate colors. In general my paint is just a bit diluted, to break down its consistency and make it easier to move with the brush. This is not a rule, just a personal preference, but I find that uh, thicker paint is easier to blend and control. With acrylics we tend to push the paint where we want. Glazing or applying a wash for example, the fading point is where you start moving the brush, and we have the maximum saturation of pigments where the brush leaves the surface. With oils we work with the opposite perspective, we pull the paint, dragging its mass from the point of application and maximum saturation to the outside and its fading perimeter. The huge difference is that oil paints create this transition in a single pass while you know how many consecutive glazes you need to paint a smooth shade. You can obtain a similar behavior from acrylics painting wet on wet, or using the loaded brush technique, but none of these methods is simple and beginner friendly as this one, the loaded brush in particular. I still have some problems trying to fully control its behavior. 
large smooth blends and shades are obviously where oils really shine. On the helmet's crest I apply yellow, red, magenta and blue as simple blocks of colors. Then I hit their borders with a clean brush, mixing an intermediate tone directly on the model and between the tones I want to merge. Painting with oils is also a great exercise to refine your general approach to painting. With acrylics, because of their super quick drying time, we often fell in the trap of adding details before setting maybe the general volumes or the full range of tones of lights and shadows. Here you can't escape the correct uh, order of operations, but with the instant gratification of seeing your sketch immediately become the final product, because what separates the two stages are just a few brush strokes on the edges of the sketch. The process remains simple and forgiving even when it comes to thin lines and details, because the brush flows on the surface without almost no resistance. At the end my palette is still extremely simple, and with just a few mixes. I basically mixed only a couple of skin tones and secondary tones like violet, orange and green. The real mixing and most of the tonal complexity happens on the model, when blending a color into the others, creating much more shades that you could possibly pre-mix on the palette. And here is the final result. Just a couple of hours of work, using only the basic principles and rudiments of oil painting on miniatures, and I spent most of the time in the preparatory work. Comparing these techniques and their level to acrylics, here we are talking about something like base layer, wash, edge highlight, but you can see that uh, the final quality is quite superior. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support the channel and my work, check my Patreon page and join the community or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week, guys.